this is a demo to retrieve a gene expression data set from the NCBI gene expression omnibus database, the GEO database, and then do some uh, simple analysis. So, here's a sample script. <coughs> this, uh, as this example uses a package a GEO query. And so first you want to make sure the gene expression data set uh, accession ID is a valid ID. So you can go to uh, NCBI GEO to verify this. You can also use the NCBI GEO, uh, uh, GEO2R uh, site to verify this is uh, also a data set can be directly loaded into R. So after that is done, and we can uh, and <coughs> these are the actually the first three lines are sample script provided by a GEO2R. So basically that would be uh, uh, the first one is get the data set from GEO to uh, make sure the internet is working. And the second two line is just to make sure uh, for multiple platform data set you want to make sure uh, you are using the correct one. So in fact uh, I know this is just one platform. So. And <coughs> so I can just pick the first one. This is basically uh, is one here. Now IDX is one here. So this line is very important. Let's uh, extract all the expression data and put it into a matrix. So yeah. So in fact, if you look at the expression now, it is now a matrix with uh, 16 columns and uh, uh, over 9,000 rows. And each row, uh, it has a probe IDs, and that's actually the position. Uh, and then those are the uh, express each individual gene expression uh, data set. Now, so basically, you have this. Yeah. So. And row IDs uh, and uh, expression data by column. So <coughs> we, the probe ID is really uh, not what we want most of the time. So we want to convert the probe ID into the OIF ID we want. So how do we find out uh, the, the connection between probe? It turns out if you look at the, the, the meta, uh, meta data, uh, you can actually uh, pretty much uh, figure out the uh, connection between them. So, so those are the, uh, the structure of the uh, bioconductor gene expression class, uh, G set in, in my case here. Uh, you can actually, uh, when you uh, when you look at the features, you can actually find out uh, in the in the feature class, you will see the IDs. Those are the probe ID, and then you you can also see the OIF. Some in some uh, uh, CDN array, uh, a person who submitted data has converted uh, the IDs into the OIF, and so that's actually much more easier. But so in most cases, if it's not, we can convert the using the uh, match function uh, to convert it. So we can basically use a, uh, extract the feature data class and the data part. That part contain the, the two columns are used for here. One is a probe ID, the other one is a ORIF. So we extract those. That's our lookup table. That's basically the lookup table for probe ID and ORIF. And then I'm going to extract a made a unique operating frames. Now, uh, in array design, if we look at this, the the raw OIF is actually say 6741. That's certainly more than the the east OIF. Uh, <coughs> so there are some uh, uh, controls, including negative control. So uh, I'm going to extract only the east operating frame, and uh, this is a regular expression method to extract certain patterns of strings. So I'm tracking everything start with Y. 
and then followed by another letters, and then followed by a, a number of digits, and three digits, and plus everything else. So those are the E's of RNS. In fact, we can, uh, uh, yeah, oops, uh, sorry. So now, so the E O I F only have a three thousand one hundred something. That's actually almost a uh, uh, six hundred less. But you can we can even see the difference between the original O I F and the E O I F. In fact, you will see many of them uh, have these weird numbers. I'm I'm not even I'm not sure what they mean. So uh, I will just replace uh, only focus on the E O I F. So for peace of mind, I'm going to. Uh, Replace uh, those st only focused on the east of our apps. So there. So basically, so now the expression data, the current expression data has 9,000 rows by probe. So clearly, uh, some of the east team may have multiple probe, and some of them seem to have just one probe. So that would be. Basically, if we if we want to analyze by every gene, then we have a problem here. So one easy approach is to uh, create an expression array uh, for just one probe, and you basically use a match function, match the ORF uh, to uh, <coughs> to uh, to the probe, and then just extract a single probe. So this actually. Um, so for this experiment too, we now just have all this uh, single uh, ORF mass. So and then we can also rename the rename those as the ORF since that's what the ORF is. So uh, you probably we probably should uh, do a visual manual check to make sure this is correct. Uh, but I'm going to uh, skip this now. So you can actually verify whether this indeed is the first probe uh, of the uh, magic probe based on the dictionary forecast data. <coughs> Another approach is to uh, loop over all the uh, probe signals in the same RF and then calculate the average of this. And for, for this case, I'm going to also keep track how many uh, operating different has multiple probes. So. So here I'm going to create a, a third expression matrix called EX3, but right now it's just a holding place for a template. And then <coughs> I'm going to loop over every uh, ORF, so for ORF in the plural forms, and every ORF I'm going to first find out the all the probes, the, the ID is probe ID. First Found out the uh, so if we just run this single single IF, right? So let's do a demo here. So if I just do this single IF and look at the, the rows, right now it's just the first row. And if, since it's the first has just one, I basically extract the single probe signals and put it into the new expression data. If it has a more, more than one row, and then I will uh, put this uh, in a record and also print out a warning, and then uh, put a record. This is a ORF with multiple probes. It basically use a concatenation uh, 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 way uh, to do the C, for instance, concatenate the multiple probe into one vector. And then I calculate uh, the average of the probe signal put into the new matrix. So every experiment is uh, average, but each experiment is still uh, separate. So this is uh, applied to the, <coughs> the original expression data, and that's the probe position, and that's the, the row position, and Apply to this means uh, calculate uh, by columns. I, I'm going to calculate the mean. So and we can <coughs> uh, run this for the entire data set, and it see those are the 
an ORF with multiple probes. Okay, so yeah, and so and we can actually see the multiple uh, things with multiple probes. There are about uh, two hundred of them, and the first one is uh, my uh, not available one. The first one is the NA, which is just starting C. So just to make it clear, I'm going to remove the first one. So if that's a record, we can go back to check. And then we do a normalization of the, make, uh, the expression data. So why do we have to do normalization? We can first calculate the total expression uh, <coughs> signal for every experiment. So here are the sum of every experiment. So it's not easy to see because the number is so large. So, um, so we can actually divide it by 1 million and then look at it again. So there. So it looks like some of them uh, have a very strong signal, like 1.1, some of uh, 2.8, oh, that's very strong. And this one has a very uh, some uh, low, 0.8. So the, the, some of them probably have too much RNA, some of them have less RNA. So this, uh, if we directly comp compare the number with, with normalized, that number is not uh, meaningful. So we want to uh, normalize. So I'm going to again put a holding plate, holding array for normalized one. How do I normalize? At first, uh, we basically use uh, the normalize everything to the uh, to one uh, total signal. Let's pick the largest one. So I pick the maximal uh, total maximal signal for our experiment. And for every experiment, I basically uh, first divide it by its own total and then scale it back to the maximum one. Then every, then every experiment is going to have the same total signal. So uh, this is basically looping over all the experiment. Yeah, then we can double check, uh, double check this one. Yeah, indeed, so after uh, I, uh, Normalizing now every experiment is summed up to the maximal signal to the same. So, so they are all at the same level now. So and just so I'm going to just assign the normalize back to the experiment three. So then we can uh, look at the signal now. So let's look at the first experiment. Uh, the first experiment. It looks like it's a very skewed distribution. So this is also a sign say we probably uh, need a log normal, uh, do a log transformation to make it uh, look like normal distribution. So yeah, this is after a log transformation, now it looks like normal distribution. But you can also see there are some uh, very uh, weak signals. Those are signal uh, so, so low after log two is actually negative and that's uh, meaningful. So it's probably a background. So I'm going to remove this one. Basically, uh, remove background. And <coughs> then we can apply other calculations. So here I'm going to calculate the, the uh, variance first. So yeah. So because they are there are uh, uh, some NA numbers, so I'm going to calculate the variance by removing the NA values. So, yeah. And this is calculated by row for every gene. So if I look at the head, uh, I, it's basically, yeah, so, so those are the uh, variance for every gene among this, uh, this set of data. And then we square, calculate the square root of that, that would be standard deviation. And we can also calculate the mean of that. And then the ratio of standard deviation and the mean is the coefficient of a variation, which is a normalized uh, spread. 
and we can put this one into a data data frame and then name it uh, by RRF. Uh, so if you if we look at this now, oops, uh, it's uh, the RRF here. So I'm going to readjust the position for the RRF first. So I basically here readjust position for the, the false column at the first. And this time again, uh, you will see the now the RIF is the first column and then followed by standard deviation mean and the coefficient variance. And then we can output this one into a, a, <coughs> a file. So this is a, a expression data set for GSE 3821. Uh, so I'm going to output this one into something called GSE log2 CV.CSV. So the, using a write.csv command. <coughs> then we can also test this. And this will probably, uh, um, we can read it back. And in order to make sure we read it correctly, I'm going to uh, make sure the first one is character. And then, uh, then it looks correct. And, and then uh, we can also do a histogram to make sure how the, everything looks like good. Like the CV, the standard deviation. Okay, I hope this helps. Thanks.